Hi, my name is Bob Chorley. In this video, I will explain how to use Baselight Edition software to change the look and feel of shots in your AVID sequences. Baselight for AVID is a powerful AVX2 plugin which provides multiple layers of color correction and numerous other tools and filters to help you interactively modify the look of your scenes. I will take you through some typical color grading operations and also show you how to use Baselight's matte and tracking tools to work on specific parts of an image, even if it's changing throughout the shot. The sequence I'm working on here is a 25 minute episode from a UK comedy called The Midnight Beast. Like many productions these days, it was shot using several different types of camera, outputting HD images in different color spaces, including Log C and Rec 709. At this point in the workflow, the edit has been locked and composites have been made using multiple video tracks in the timeline. I've also added an additional video track which I've called BL Grade. I can either add the Baselight plugin to Spacer on this track or directly to the source clips in other tracks. If necessary, I can also nest it with other plugins. I've already done some work on this sequence, so I'm going to jump in here and show you how to apply a basic grade. Once I've added Baselight to the clip, I can access its controls by going into Effect Mode and clicking on this button in the Effect Editor. Baselight provides its own user interface, which can be expanded to full screen by clicking on this button. The UI consists of a control panel on the left, and on the right are the image display and scopes. Here we have an RGB parade display and a vector scope, but we can also use other types of waveform monitor if we prefer. Note that the scopes are dependent on the type of GPU in your machine, so you may find that on your hardware you can only use the histogram. However, all the scopes are updated in real time and provide an accurate representation of the content of your image. Baselight applies grades and other effects using layers within the plugin. Layer 0 represents the image being fed into the plugin from the timeline. To add a new layer, we can either press P on the keyboard or we can click on the plus button in the layer manager here. The layer manager provides direct access to all the layers currently applied to this shot. When a new layer is created, it contains several different grade operators. However, they are all initially set to a unity state. In other words, they will not currently have any effect on the image. To access the controls for these different operators, you can either press L on the keyboard or click on this little triangle here. The Grade Operators panel opens up in the middle of the UI. You can also show and hide this panel by clicking on the button up here. When an operator is selected, its controls appear on the left. These parameters are also mapped onto the various controls of the artist colour grading surface. Now before I start making any adjustments to change the look of this image, I'm going to apply a colour space conversion. This footage came from an Alexa camera and was recorded in Log C color space. As I'm working with the original native camera files, the image here looks flat and low contrast in my video display. I'm therefore going to use a lookup table or LUT to convert from Log C color space to video color space. Baselight for Avid includes TrueLight. TrueLight is a high quality color management system used widely within the film and video industry. Here, I'm using it to apply a LUT to our raw camera footage. As TrueLight is not one of the default operators, I've added it from the list of additional operators available within Baselight. As soon as I select the Log C to Video LUT, you can see that the image has changed to look more like what you would expect. In fact, as the LUT was provided by ARRI, the image here should look virtually the same as it did on the video monitors used on set. OK, now I can start to grade this shot. Although I could use these additional operators in this layer, I'm going to keep things a bit more organised by adding another layer to apply my basic grade. The simplest type of grade operator is the video grade. This provides independent level control and colour bias of the dark and bright tone ranges in the image. It also allows you to adjust the gamma or black stretch and the saturation. Saturation can be controlled using the knobs on the artist colour or by reassigning one of these three main controls. These are the same basic controls you would find on most other colour correction systems and plugins. 
Baselight provides both RGB controls as well as YCBCR controls. These enable independent adjustment of luminance and chrominance, which is very useful as it allows you to adjust the gain and contrast of an image without affecting the saturation. OK, I've adjusted the basic look of this shot to bring out a bit of detail and to set an appropriate colour temperature and feel for the scene. Before I return to the timeline, I can play through the shot within Baselight by pressing the spacebar or play button on the artist colour. I can also drag this cursor along the navigation bar or step one frame at a time to check that the grade looks OK throughout the shot. One great feature of Baselight is the ability to make adjustments interactively while playing back. OK, so let's return to the timeline and see how that looks in the edit. Baselight for Avid is a GPU accelerated real-time effect, which means I can play it back immediately even at full resolution without having to render it first. Now the next few shots in this scene were filmed at the same time with the same lighting setup, so we can simply extend the grade to cover all these shots. And they should look similar. Well that looks OK, but the last shot is a bit blown out in the highlights. So I'll cut the grade at this point, and I'll go back in and adjust the last clip. Rather than adjust the existing video grade, I'm adding another layer and using a different type of grade to bring down just the highlights, without losing the overall brightness. This grade operator is known as the film grade, as it provides controls similar to those used in traditional film processing. There are also other grade operators with different characteristics, which can be used individually or in combination, giving you plenty of flexibility to adjust the look of the image in many different ways. OK, that looks a bit better, but I've noticed that the collar and sleeves on this guy's jacket are a slightly different shade of red than they were in the previous shot. I can jump back to the previous grade in the timeline by pressing F5 on the keyboard. This is set up as a macro to avoid having to close the base light window, step back in the timeline and then open it up again. If I scrub through the shot, I can check the colour of the jacket. Yes, it looks a little less orange here. In fact, if I click on the colour in the image display, I can see its hue in the vector scope. It's just about in line with the primary red vector. While I'm here, I'm also going to grab a snapshot of this image by pressing A on the keyboard. If I now step forward again to the next shot, using F6, I can see that the red hue here is a little yellower. So I'm going to add a hue shift to the red colour to twist it round a bit. Well, according to the vector scope, that should match quite well but I can also make a visual comparison by exposing part of the snapshot I grabbed earlier from the other shot. I do this by holding down the command key while dragging in the image. Now I can fine tune the grade to get the best match between these shots. Now that I've set the grades on this scene, I can copy them into a bin and then apply them as a starting point for other similar shots in the sequence. As I work through the rest of the project, I can build up a library of different shots and store them in bins to apply them to other shots in the sequence.
So the process of applying primary grades to shots in a scene to give them a specific look is quite straightforward. You can quickly apply these grades to all the scenes in a sequence and make adjustments when necessary to match colours between shots. So how about using Baselight to do something a bit more creative? Well here is an example of a shot which I'd like to modify. I'd like to make it look a bit more dramatic. I'm going to use a key to separate out the sky and then I'm going to process the sky to bring out the clouds more and give them a slightly polluted look. This type of grade is known as a secondary grade. Baselight provides several different types of luma and chroma key which can be used to select specific ranges of colour. For example, you may want to select flesh tones in a face or the blue colour of an ocean. In this case, I'm using the hue angle keyer to select the range of colours which covers just the clouds and the sky. I'm also going to combine the key with a feathered edge mat to restrict it to the area above the horizon. I access the mat operators by clicking on this button, but as with many of the functions in Baselight, I could have used a keyboard shortcut to speed things up a bit. You've probably noticed the keyboard shortcuts I've been using so far appearing on the screen as overlays. You can also find a complete list of all the keyboard shortcuts available under the Help menu. OK, what I now have here is a mat within this layer which will allow me to apply a specific look to just the areas covered by the white parts of the mat. Mats can be created using keys or shapes or a combination of keys and shapes, whatever you need really to isolate the area you want to grade. The mat itself can also be processed using a range of functions to soften it, fill small holes, expand the edge and so on. So I've modified the look of the clouds inside the white parts of the mat, but I can also apply a completely different look to the area covered by the black parts of the mat. We call this inside-outside grading. There, that's the sort of look I was after. At any time in the grading process, I can bypass the current layer to check what effect it's having on the image. I can also compare the current look with the original ungraded image, either as a side-by-side -side view or using a wipe. I can also enlarge the image viewer to fill the screen if I want to see it in more detail. It's also possible to adjust the grade in full screen mode using the artist colour panel or by rotating the mouse pointer on the screen in gestural grading mode. OK, now that I've set the look I want for this shot, I'm going to apply it to another similar shot in the timeline. Rather than copy this look via a bin, this time I'm going to export it as a BLG file. This is a new file format developed by Filmlight to enable looks to be easily exchanged with other systems such as full baselight grading suites or the flip onset system. OK, this is the other shot, so I'll import the BLG file I exported from the previous shot to apply the same look to this one. Right, I need to adjust the key a little and also move the edge mat. There, that looks about right. Secondary grades like this are used a lot for highlighting details in an image or for suppressing parts of a scene so they're not so prominent. In this example, I want to highlight the girl's face and also reduce the impact of the lights behind. First, I'll add a primary grade layer to improve the overall contrast of the image. Right, well that looks better, but the lights behind now appear even brighter. So I'll add another layer and create a mat to cover the area of the bright lights. 
I'm using a feathered ellipse to create the mat. By overlaying the mat on the image, I can check the area that it covers. All closed shapes in Baselight are formed using Bezier curves, so I can easily adjust them using control points and handles. There, that looks about right, so I'll add a grade within the mat to reduce the glare from the lights. OK, that looks better, and it's also helped to push the other girls a little into the background. However, we've also darkened our subject's face. What I need to do is cut a hole in the mat so it doesn't affect her face. I'll create a second shape and subtract it from the first using this Merge Mode button. There is in fact no limit to the number of shapes you can combine to create the mat you need. Now I also need to animate this shape to follow the face. I could manually animate the shape using keyframes, but to dramatically speed up this process, Baselight provides a powerful auto tracking system. The area tracker locks onto features within this rectangle and then follows them as they move around the screen. The result is a shape which neatly follows Jenny's face, cutting a hole in the overall mat and bringing the brightness back. I'm going to add a final layer to bring a little more focus to the centre of the image. Again, I'll create a layer mat using a feathered shape. I want to extend this shape vertically, beyond the edges of the frame, so I'll zoom the image display back a little. I can also use this display zooming and panning function to zoom in on specific parts of an image to work on them in more detail. OK, I'll now use a combination of grade operators inside the layer mat to increase the level slightly and boost the saturation. And outside, I'll push it down slightly and reduce the saturation. I'll also add a small amount of blur to defocus the background a little more. Once again, I can compare the final version with the original. I can also step through the layers so we can see how each one affects the image. This is just another example to show how a combination of primary and secondary grade layers helps to create a specific look and feel for a scene and to focus your attention on certain parts of the image. As I mentioned earlier, Baselight for Avid provides many other grade and filter operators, as well as several other keyers, shapes and matte functions. In fact, Baselight for Avid provides virtually all the same core tools available in the full Baselight systems. Once we've finished all the grading in this sequence, we can either render it out to produce the final deliverables, or we can export the sequence as an AAF file and take it directly into a full Baselight suite, where the scene can be conformed with the same original source material and all the grades and other Baselight effects will magically appear as grade stacks in the Baselight timeline. From there, a final grade can be crafted and master deliverables rendered from the Baselight suite, or the graded sequence can be re-exported as an AAF file and brought back to the Avid suite for a final online session. Well that just about wraps it up for this quick look at Baselight for Avid. Why not try it for yourself? Happy grading! <laughs>